Not only is the World Cup the largest international sporting event ever, it's also a massive financial and tourism opportunity for the host country. And that's why host countries vie so much for them. Qatar is estimated to have spent $220 billion on the World Cup. Here's a look at the crowd before today's match between Mexico and Poland. More than 1.2 million fans are expected to visit Qatar during the month-long tournament. That's almost half of the country's entire population. Let's bring in Anne Barry. She's the global economic, a global economist and founder of Thread Needle Ventures. Uh, welcome. Thanks for making the time to walk us through uh, World Cup, something I could be talking about <laughs> all day long. Do you expect to see Qatar get a return on that multi-billion investment, especially multi-dollar billion investment, especially with so many conversations that are happening mm -hmm. and so many roadblocks, if you will, of how it all came together and the concerns over human rights? Just to put in context that that number and the spend, I think you just cited uh, $200 billion of spend preparing for the World Cup arrival. It's an extraordinary number when you look at what the overall annual GDP of Qatar is, which is also roughly in that $200 billion range. This is an enormous investment for the country. When you take a step back and look at what Qatar's primary revenue sources as, as a nation have been historically, it has been oil, natural gas, and from sectors adjacent to those, such as petrochemicals and fertilizers. Um, this is a really important step for Qatar hosting the World Cup in trying to support attempts to diversify the economy. Qatar looks to nations like Singapore, which has become a real tech and financial hub, or Dubai that's moved successfully into hosp um, hospitality, entertainment, and media, for example. And this is Qatar's attempt to do the same. This is a really pivotal moment in the economic trajectory of that nation. And I want to follow up with you on that point. Uh, Qatar's primary source of revenue is its oil reserves. Um, how much does it actually need a return on its investment? How important is it for it to diversify the economy? And is it actually pursuing something besides the dollars in, in trying to host the World Cup and in, in hosting the World Cup this time? Well, in terms of whether the nation needs to see a return, I think when you look at the scale of dependency that Qatar has on oil and gas, and just to put it in context, that the nation accounts for about 14% of the global deposits of natural gas, then clearly um, the immediate revenue generation of the nation will continue to come from those commodity sectors. But for the nation to diversify longer term, you know, these are finite resources. There are not going to be uh, carbon resources uh, in the geography forever. So there needs to be a longer term plan. And this really is the first step to put towards building the infrastructure, building the facilities, uh, and really raising global awareness of Qatar that's going to, in the eyes of the nation, hopefully attract further foreign direct investment in non-commodity related industries down the line. So I think the return is going to be longer gestation, mm -hmm. um, but absolutely necessary if Qatar is going to be successful in replicating again what Singapore and Dubai have done, which is diversifying. Um, and I want to go back to something, you know, <laughs> I'm going to age myself here a little bit, but about 12 years ago, I, not about, 12 years ago, I covered the World Cup in South Africa. And part of my assignment was to tell all these stories about all the things that are going on in, in the country, from extreme sports to, you know, the history of the country. It was all kind of very positive. So yeah, the World it Cup, feels different. Yeah, brought visibility to this great place, and that sparks tourism and interest. But in terms of Qatar right now, a lot of the attention and the scrutiny has to do with human rights. And of course, having that spotlight there has brought to light issues with women's rights, with the rights of the LGBTQ community, and of course, with uh, the migrant workers and, and their rights and the kind of labor that put together these and that build these big stadiums. Do you think that the country can still uh, find success in the tourism industry in the face of all these controversies? Well, in terms of the public relations exercise that has surrounded this World Cup, to your point, it has been very challenging even before the tournament started. There has been controversy around the way in which Qatar was selected by FIFA uh, to host the World Cup right. this year. To your point on uh, human rights challenges, those have been very much at the forefront of the coverage of the tournament. What I do think that this has done is um, shone the light on these issues, uh, brought them to the fore in the conversation. And so at least what I do think is uh, progress 
um, and can be supportive of the, the path that Qatar seems to want to go down, which is diversifying and opening itself up to tourism. Issues that were not previously being openly talked about are now being openly talked about. They're very much at the top of the agenda in the way in which this World Cup is being discussed. And as a result, the conversation is now open for ways in which the nation can solve these issues. I think that is the development. I think it's going to be slow uh, to come to remediation and to come to solutions that attract tourism en masse. But I think at least this is a start. I like the positive angle that you're taking there, Anne, that, that Qatar maybe will decide that it needs to make some progress on some of those issues. Then. Depends Anne. on how they'll respond to it. Exactly. Yeah. Anne Barry, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.